At this point on surface streets, it looks like a fairly narrow area with some residential uh, spots there. So that certainly is a very, uh, that, that clip is, is quite dangerous if there are people and there was some blowing. And he's blowing through yeah. the stop signs. So yeah. it is, it can be very dangerous. Thankfully, I mean, I don't know about you, Tom, but when I came into work, there's not a lot of traffic on the road today. I think people are kind of in a coma from the Christmas holiday. So hopefully not a lot of people on the road. If you are in the area there, it looks like I got to zoom in here with my eyes, but um, <laughs> Lexington Street in Ontario. Right, and in the IE right now, I think what you're going to see a lot of is on some of the freeways. If this uh, driver does get on one of the freeways, there may be some issues just in terms of the holiday traffic returning from this weekend. But certainly, like you said, on the surface streets right now, it is pretty quiet as you take a live look there. And we've got kind of a, a situation that we can tell you it's on East End Avenue. If you look at the top of your screen, that indicates where we are watching uh, in terms of the location at this point. Uh, as Christine said, you know, we were concerned about speed and it does appear to be picking up. If uh, it, especially if this is in a residential area, which it did at one point appear to be in. So, and we also, you know, kind of want to see that backstory play out a little bit. Why did they Ooh. change cars? Yeah, that's a very close. It's coming very close to those cars that he's going around. Yes, indeed. And you have to wonder too, like you said, Christine, if there are very few cars out on the road, uh, whether or not this person can, you know, take this for a long time. Okay, we're going to bring in now over the phone Dave Avila. He's a retired LAPD um, pilot, and he's going to talk to us a little about a little bit about what we're seeing. Hi, Dave. Can you hear us? Hello, Christine. Hello, Tom. Hi yes, there. I can. Uh, you know, this is some, one of those that uh, you know you got the uh, the female passenger, the other driver, uh, the driver. I'm not real up on the driver though. But uh, with this type of vehicle, it can go a long ways. We just went through a red light, so you could see the desperation. Now, I'm not sure if we have a, uh, an air unit overhead, though, but I, if we don't, I know we do have one en route. And you only see, I think I only saw one patrol car behind him and following back quite a bit. Is that just they're kind of waiting to see how this plays out before they're more aggressive? Yeah. You know what they'll do is that... Um, you know, you have the initiating unit and that they'll stay with it. Other units may be uh, attempting to catch up or they're paralleling the pursuit as much as they can because this, this suspect is just weaving in and out of different areas, now in a commercial area. So uh, I, I believe that's what's going on right now. But there's other units in route, at least in route. Well, and it's interesting too, Ontario, as we know, it, it's, a very, it's a mix of a lot of industrial and residential areas. So it can change very quickly from one neighborhood to the next. I think he's now in Pomona. And I now think he just Pomona. switched over to Pomona, well, yes. And you know, and, and same goes for Pomona. There's a lot of areas of Pomona that are very urban and dense. And then there's also some areas that are very spread out, you know, specifically along you know, the area around the Fairplex. This person, I mean, a lot of times, in, in, uh, Tell me what you think, uh, Mr. Avila. Is it usually when you see someone in these particular areas, there's generally a sense that they kind of know the neighborhoods? Yeah, and we've seen that over and over again where they try to get to an area that they know where they what we would, as police would say, friendlies, you know, that they have friends that may be able to hide them, that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, but you're both correct, though. This Pomona is almost just like Ontario, where you can go from a neighborhood into an industrial area in, uh, you know, left or a couple of turns and you'll be in a completely different environment. Right, now we're yeah. seeing him turn off his headlights. It looks like kind of uh, maybe stopping behind that building there. And we also want to we want to bring up some video that's from earlier, um, not a live video, but from earlier where the suspect was switching cars. You can see that in the screen um, on the right of your uh, monitor. And you can see he's getting out of one car and going into another car. And then that's when the pursuit continued. So. Um, and here we are back live. It oh. looks like he's stopped. And it looks like he just went through a gate, Christine. I think, I don't, I, it's hard to tell because it's dark, but he did go through a gate. Yeah, I can't tell if that's, now, oh, those are homes. Right. There he is. Oh, there he is. Yep. Okay, that yeah, may be like, a That's female. someone it's front like, door? Hard to tell. It looked like the person had long hair. Yeah, he hair, walked so into a house. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is his home or if he walked into someone else's home. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, the door was wide open there. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, no, no worries. Uh, this is just like what we were talking about earlier, where they try to find a place uh, where there's some friendlies. They have people that they know. Well, you know, when they made oh, that looks first like stop. He picked up someone. Yeah, it looks like someone else is coming out now from the front door. This is odd. <laughs> this is very odd. Yeah. And it looks like they're coming back toward the car, which, you know, 
I would imagine now there's other cruisers in yeah, position. So what, you know, what's the what, what kind of is the protocol here? You don't see any other cars surrounding him. Is that because he lost them or they're just hanging back? They may they may be hanging back. I mean, you know, they, they obviously they have uh, Channel 2 helicopter overhead. I'm sure they're looking at that. But uh, I'm not sure if they're going to pull that vehicle in there or not. Yeah, I think that's but, well. They are, yeah. And look, there's a number of people that were opening the gate. Yeah, it's very strange. I, it, they went into the house, came back out of the house. It's not clear if the same driver returned back to the car. It's very dark, obviously, so we can't tell. And now that car has left the scene from that location. And they're, and still they're shining a light. It yeah. looks like they're shining a light up at the helicopter. Well, there's, there's a patrol car pulling right up there. Yep. So this might be hopefully coming to an end. Well, the problem, too, is now, and, and Dave, you could tell us, I mean, this could turn into a standoff situation because now you've gotten, you've got people coming in and out of that car that was the subject. He and He just kicked up. Yeah, and so now you've got people in the house now connected with the pursuit, so we don't know what their role is. Were they trying to, w was the person who went back in the house, did they get back in the car? Looks like someone came out the back of the house because the way that house is, it looks like they almost have the entire, you know, the front of the house is on one street, the back of the house is on another. Yeah, and that's one thing that, that they'll do. It's not like the movies where you just go rushing in. This officer here is just trying to see, just nosing around, trying to find out if they could see any type of suspect, any activity in the back. But definitely when you have somebody that enters a house, what they'll do, is, what the area you know, will do is they'll start setting up somewhat of a perimeter around the location. Now, the vehicle involved did pull off. I'm not sure how far down it got, or, or uh, but you notice that we have officers that uh, surrounded the location. So this way, um, they could just set up a perimeter. And then once you have that, you don't know if you're going to have a standoff. We don't know if there's any weapons involved. We got that one loan officer. Oh, yeah, he's got one suspect in custody. Oh, yeah, so, it's tough well, to see. We, oh, that's correct. Yeah, they're surrounding. It looks like the person's laying down face, face on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And so so you, you don't know what you're dealing with at this point. I mean, yeah, it, it's a pursuit, uh, stolen vehicle. We're not real sure on that. But what they could do now is they take this one suspect into custody and and see what they can get out of him or her. I can't really tell because I do know there was a female that was involved in this also. I seen her walk in and she had kind of like a, a bag or something mm. yeah. and was in a big hurry to get inside that house. Well, so now, and Dave, would, is, is it now at the point where they obviously have to secure the scene and then probably go through the house because obviously they know that, as you pointed out, or... Christine, maybe you pointed out as well, there, they did take what potentially could be evidence into that house, and they need to figure out what that is. Yeah, and they'll, they'll go ahead, and like I had mentioned before, yeah, and they, they set up a perimeter. I mean, that's the first thing they'll do. And uh, they won't enter the house until they get a team together, a search team, and they may just hold off. You know, they're, they're trying to find out more of what exactly is going on, see what other type of crimes are involved, because uh, it was like the... Uh, the desperation really built up at the end. It, we had numerous people running around. Right. I mean, there's, there's quite a few people that are involved in this. So what the heck is going on? We don't know yet. So the officers are just being real cautious. You know, another another point here at this point, there's it, it, it's contained as much as we can right now. So we can just hold back. We can just find out what we're doing. We can either set up a search team. we got a canine on, on scene. Or... We could just wait back and um, uh, wait for SWAT to come in to see if they want to enter. So and there's also a way that they can try and, and contact people inside the house and maybe ask them to come out one at a time. You know, we're, uh, you, there, nobody's going anywhere. You've got officers surrounding the whole place. So that's, that's one, you know, one technique you can do is just try and talk them out. And then the other thing is try to evacuate the people around because uh, the surrounding homes. Well, the, try to, uh, get these people out. well, the good news is they're now off the street, right? So we don't have to worry about the, the pursuit affecting anybody on the roadways, especially with so many families on the roads. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dave Avila, retired LAPD pilot. Everyone stay with us. Anytime. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back uh, at the half hour.